Good afternoon, everyone. It's theCUBE live, CrowdStrike, Falcon 23. This is day two of our coverage. This is over 4,000 people here, customers, partners, executives. It's been a great day and a half covering the event. We've been talking with executives, with the ecosystem as well. We're going to be doing that next. Anthony Sito joins us, the field CTO at Dig Security. Anthony, great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you for yeah, joining us. Thank you for having us. Give us the, the lowdown on Dig Security. We, like the, we already like the name. Tell us who you guys are, what you do, mission, vision. Yeah, so Dig Security, we are a leader in the data security space. We're really focused on two things. Our data security platform is focused on DSPM, so data security posture management, and then also a technology called DDR, which is something that we invented, which is data detection and response. So it's looking at how do we help customers understand if data is leaving their environment in real time, right? So the founding of the company was really to help answer three questions, one of which was, can I see if my data is leaving my environment? But also, where does my data live in the cloud? and who has access to that data. And that's a big challenge now, right, is customers don't know as they go into the cloud or the multi-cloud where their data lives. So if you don't know where it is, how do you know how to protect it? How do you know who has access to it? Talk a little bit about CrowdStrike. I see on the website they're an investor. They are, yep. So CrowdStrike is an investor. Um, they're also a technology partner as well, right? So one of the things that we've built with them is the ability to do malware scanning in the cloud. So customers that have both Dig and CrowdStrike now have the ability to look for malware in their uh, cloud data stores across the multi-cloud environment. How does DSPM work? So DSPM really is, you know, it's a set of processes and technologies around assessing, protecting, and monitoring your data and really reducing your risk, right? So what we do is we do discovery and classification. So we go out and we look at, number one, what data exists in the cloud? What type of data is it? Is it sensitive data? So is it PII data or PCI data or PHI data? Right, and then we look at the posture of it. So again, is it misconfigured properly? Who has access? Is data flowing from, to and from environments? Um, and then again, there's the real-time piece of it, right? Being able to look at, in real time, and alerting our customers, hey, you've got someone that's moving data out of your environment right now. Maybe data's flowing from production to a dev environment. Or maybe it's leaving your environment and going to an environment that doesn't belong to you, right? These are the types of questions that traditional cloud security tools haven't really been able to support and answer. So, the classification piece, presumably is math, Right. Somewhat. I mean, I mean, well how do you do it? Is it, is it support vector machines or probabilistic latent semantic indexing or, what, is it, or is it just some other magic that you developed? Or? Yeah, so our classification engine really, think of it as a funnel, right? So we leverage really four different ways to identify data. So at the top of the funnel, it's just things like pattern matching, right? How do we know if this 16 digits is actually a credit card number? Well it looks like a credit card number because it's 16 digits. And then the next step is we want to say, okay, now that we see these 16 digits, Let's look for contextual clues, right? Is this 16 digits surrounded by a name, a first name or a last name? Is it surrounded by an expiration date or a three digit code, right? Then that next level is about, okay, now we leverage algorithms, right? Now that we know that these 16 digits looks and smells like a credit card number, can we use algorithms to determine is this the right set of combination of 16 digits to make a valid credit card number? And we do this across structured, unstructured, managed and unmanaged data in the cloud, right? So not just looking at the cloud native services, but also looking at things like database as a service. So we have support for Snowflake, and we have support coming for Databricks. And then this morning we actually announced support for Office 365, so looking at SharePoint and OneDrive, right? Uh, as well as on-prem file shares. So that was some announcements we actually made this morning uh, about some other places that we're getting into in terms of where we want to do data discovery. What is, how is DSPM different from existing cloud security tools that are out there in the market. You talked about some of the, kind of the three catalysts of why the company was founded, but how does it, how do you differentiate it from the other yeah, tools? Great question. We get this question a lot, right? Because we've spent, as an industry, the last couple of years investing in what I call the, you know, the alphabet soup of cloud, right? Mm -hmm. CSPM and CNAP and CWPP and CIEM, right? Cloud everything. To me, and I like to use analogies a lot when I when I talk to customers, right? If you think of your cloud as like a bank, right? When you think about a bank, Right, a bank is really designed to be secure from the get-go, right? You've got security cameras, you've got to make sure that it's a strong foundation, it can withstand forced entry. But at the end of the day, what do people want when they get into the bank? They want your data, right? And so if you think about the cloud, right, it's the same thing, right? If someone's going to come into my environment, I need to be able to protect that data from the inside out. So even if I built a very secure bank, what do we have inside of banks? We have vaults. Well, why do we have vaults? Because we have to protect the valuables. Right, and so I think as an industry, we've done a really good job of figuring out how to secure the perimeter, and we're still working on securing the perimeter of the cloud, but you have insider threats, you have malware, you have people that have access that you've been given 
into your environment, right? So you need to be able to protect the data at the source of the data. And up until now, there hasn't really been a solution in that space, right? You've got EDR, endpoint, that's great, but a lot of these breaches that are happening are happening at the data source in the cloud. They're not happening at the endpoint anymore, right? So for us, it's really about protecting data where data lives. So you mentioned you're protecting uh, database as a service. You said Snowflake. Databricks today, is coming. Databricks yep. is coming. What is it about the modern data stack that makes it an interesting opportunity for you and what's the challenge that that brings for customers? I mean, I think the challenge right now is as we move to the cloud and as people have gone multi-cloud, they simply don't know where their data lives, right? If you think about the traditional data center, right, you knew where your data lived because you provisioned those storage assets, right? You put in those storage arrays, you've given people access, and in the traditional sense, it was typically a small number of large data assets, but in the, in the cloud, we're seeing a, a large number of small discrete data assets, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Things like microservices, for example, have really made the ability to spread data out much more ubiquitous. But the problem with the cloud is also dynamic, right? Things spin up, things spin down. So knowing where your data lives is the first challenge. And so for us, that's really where we see the challenge in the market is customers simply don't know where their data is today. So it's like, like for instance, Snowflake, it can spin up a small data warehouse and, and, you know, and share data across clouds and different locations, so that, that creates a problem. I guess, I guess Databricks is heading that And what data lives in there, direction. right? Is it sensitive data, right? If you're a customer that has a variety of information around your clientele, how do you know if that data is in a specific data asset? And we see it all the time, right? There was the announcement yesterday from uh, a breach perspective where I think Microsoft had some data where it was, a, it was data for like an LLM, right? For one of their language models, where someone accidentally put in information around a backup of someone's laptop, and that laptop had all sorts of different information that was sensitive, right? That's the type of stuff that we're helping customers identify and figure out. And so, okay, so, but Snowflake would say, okay, put everything in the Snowflake data cloud and we got you covered, but of course they need partners to actually do all the sort of details. So are you basically work within that environment, you'll work within a, a, a Databricks environment, maybe other environments yeah, as well? Yeah, so great question. So we're discovering data that's living in Snowflake, mm -hmm. but one of the great things about the Dig platform is that our architecture was designed from the beginning to be secure. What that means is we do all of our data discovery in the customer's cloud. So that sensitive data never actually has to leave their environment. And that's a big deal for our customers because if, you're gonna, if you want a third party to be able to discover and classify, you don't want them to have access to that data as well. And that's also some of the ways that we differentiate from some of the existing cloud security solutions where some of those technologies require you to take data outside, right? And we don't want to have control of your data just like you don't want us to have control of your data as well. Right, right. right. Data security is, is such a challenge as you've talked about how have your customer conversations evolved? We know security is a board level conversation. What have you seen in terms of the level of customers coming to you saying, help us figure this out, we've got a lot, we've got to lock down data security and know where it is? Yeah, you know, I was yesterday I was in a meeting in New York with a, a bunch of CISOs and this was a, a hot topic. And what we've seen is data security, especially if you look like Gartner, right? So Gartner's got their hype cycle, their hype cycle report just came out and they describe data security posture management or DSPM as very embryonic, so it's still very early stage, but the benefits to the business are transformational, right? So for them, this is, again, it's kind of that missing link, right? When, if I go back to my analogy, right? You, you have banks, banks always have vaults, right? If you've got a cloud, right, and you've got CSPM or CNAP or whatever it is protecting your perimeter, you also have to protect from the inside. So I think this is very much becoming top of mind for all the executives we talk to, because when I ask them those three questions, can you identify what data lives in your cloud, who has access? Nobody ever tells me yes, right? It's always kind of an uncomfortable, maybe, but we're not really sure. We need someone to help us get there. And the legacy solutions that were in the data center aren't designed for the modern cloud. So they're really struggling to be able to do this at scale in these large scale environments where there's thousands or tens of thousands of data assets. So what sort of traditional, you mentioned legacy systems, that, I presume that's what you're disrupting. Can you describe sort of give us some more color on that, and how big is, is your market? I mean, I would say the total address market is, is large. I mean, anybody that has data in the cloud is a potential customer of what we do. I think a lot of the traditional players that were in this space, they're focused on the data center. And again, in the data center, you know where that data lives and you've provisioned it. But as those vendors pivot to the cloud, I think where they're struggling is that they require agents and connectors, right? We're agentless, we don't require you to provision anything, we're, we're non-disruptive tier to production workloads. And I think that's where we're seeing customers who want to do this at scale that have large environments, 
those legacy tech doesn't really work for them because they're like, I don't have the time to provision thousands of connectors for my thousands of data assets because frankly, I don't even know where those data assets live and if you can't tell me where they live, how do I know where to go provision access? How do I know how to connect them to those platforms? So is Dig sort of exclusive cloud? Cloud native, exclusive so cloud? So cloud is where we started. Mm -hmm. um, with some of the announcements we announced this morning, we are really looking to support data wherever it lives. So we announced this morning we're going to support on-prem file shares because that's a big request from customers. And then of course people are asking for SaaS applications, right? Office 365 probably being the biggest one, but then G Suite will probably follow later this year as well. And, and again, as the databases, I mean, see it with Snowflake, <laughs> certainly Databricks, starting to ingest data from different locations, so to the extent they do that, that just benefits you and increases your TAM. Because yeah, we want to be able to show customers, what data do you have living in data, in your, your, your Databricks environment, right? Do you have a, a social security number or a credit card number that lives in that database that maybe shouldn't be there, right? We talked about differentiators in terms of, of competing or existing cloud security tools, yep. but let's talk about DIG's differentiators within the DSPM market. When you're talking with customers, what are the top three things that you see really define the value proposition of DIG yeah, security? Great question. So I think the first is the DDR piece, right? That was the piece that we coined and we invented. So that real-time detection and response is the first. Customers want to know static risk, like misconfiguration, but they also want to know real-time. Is someone, again, pulling data in my environment, right? And where is that data going? Um, I think the second thing is around this, the accuracy and the speed of our classification and discovery process, right? So the time to value for our customers is very quick. We can onboard customers in minutes, not days or weeks. Um, and we can discover data in 24, 48 hours and really start giving them tangible things that they can go back to their teams and say, hey, here's what you have to focus on. And we've also put a really strong focus on security posture, right? We are a security tool, and so we've got a lot of uh, you know, policies built into the product to kind of help guide customers as to where to start. What's the low hanging fruit, right? Where do I start? when I implement something like a dig to help me figure out where my data is at risk. How do you, so <clears throat> thinking about the modern, the so-called modern data stack, which Snowflake and Databricks are sort of the poster children of that. BigQuery for sure, now Microsoft has Fabric, obviously AWS says it's bespoke tooling. That comprises sort of the modern data stack of today. How do you see that evolving? Like as an example, you're seeing analytic and transaction data coming together you're seeing more of a push to real time, IOT, digital twins, digital representations of your business, which seems like it's going to do a couple things. It's going to increase the real time nature, and this whole conference is about going faster, yep. and breakout times, and things like that, so real time speed, um, and, and as well, more data. How do you see that evolving, and how will that affect your opportunity and, yeah, and, and I mean, approach? Again, I think for us, it's about really being able to protect data wherever data lives, right? So to your point earlier, right, we are starting in the cloud, we're going to SaaS. We're also looking at things like LLMs, right? So we announced a couple of months ago that we're going to start having support for discovering what type of data goes into your large language models, right? Generative AI is such a hot topic this year. It's probably the hottest topic, right, of 23. And so we want to be able to support customers and discover, well, what data is going into your LLMs and how do we secure that data, right? So I think, for us, it's really just about figuring out wherever your data lives in your cloud, we want to be able to discover and help you protect it. What, what do you make of Charlotte AI, and is there a play there for, for you all? Is it, is it an adjacency? Does it support what you're trying to do? Is it somewhat an overlap? Um, I'll be honest, not, not as familiar with that space, so I don't know that I have a great answer for you there. No, that's, so it's, it's uh, Charlotte AI is CrowdStrikes, uh, basically, their, their LLM SOC assistant. Ah, right? okay. You talk to Charlotte, and she tells you like what vulnerabilities you have, prioritization. The whole idea is to reduce the, the heavy lifting of the yeah. SOC analyst. Yeah, so I think there are things that we are looking at in that space where you know, we want to make the product easy to use. But to your point, being able to query and say, hey, can I go ask it a question, right? Show me all my data assets that have PHI data that are open to the world, right? So I think, we're certainly investigating leveraging that technology, but I think there's also a little bit of risk that we are very reliant on AI already, but as we've seen, sometimes it's not always accurate, right? And sometimes you got to make sure that you still have some human factor validating those results, mm -hmm. right? So I think we're certainly doing our diligence from a product perspective to see if that's a route that we want to go down. For customers, can you share a little bit about the, the CrowdStrike integration and help us understand how you're really, from a technology partner perspective, working synergistically 
Yeah, so the way that we work is we're basically leveraging the cloud APIs. So what we're doing is we're basically sending the hash of all the files that we scan in a customer's data asset, and we're sending it to CrowdStrike, and they're returning back basically the uh, confidence level and the family that malware belongs to, right? So it's a, it's a great partnership. We were the first to really bring malware scanning to cloud data assets, and of course we're doing that with our great friends and investors at CrowdStrike. When was the company founded? Uh, we went to market just about two years ago, right? So we're based in Tel Aviv. There's about 80 of us or so, um, and it's been, a, it's been a great run so far. And then CrowdStrike was, what, part of the Series A? Or um, don't know great question. Here. I don't know if I have that. I think they were part of the Series A, mm. but I'm not the right person to know that one. I don't no, get all the dollars I'm, and cents. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> What's your, while Dave's looking that up, you must have a favorite customer story that you think really shows the value of what Dig is delivering in the DSPM market. Share with us, if you can't mention it by name, that's okay, yeah. by industry or use case, that you think really says, this is why we're here. Yeah, so we were working with a large financial here in the US, and what we saw was that they had data that was leaving their environment. It was basically a script that was running, and that, that data was going to an account that didn't belong to them. Turns out it belonged to an employee that had left the company and basically left a script that was running that was exfiltrating data. Right, I mean that's, that's one of those things where you need to be able to see it in real time, right? Looking at static risk, looking at posture is one part of the problem, but that data exfiltration in real time is really the piece that, that customers I think are really missing in the current cloud security space, especially at the data asset level itself, right? As opposed to the endpoint or the application. At the data level, real time is no longer uh, a nice to have, it's an imperative. It's a, it's a must have. Yeah. You've got some very yeah. cool investors. We so do. CyberArk seeded you. Okta invested, obviously CrowdStrike, we yep. talked about that, Okta invested in, in you guys. Nancy Wong, who's like an AWS, like data protection pro and an investor. So that's, you got some, you got some good juice on your Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's a, like I said, it's a great yeah. space to be in. Um, and certainly we're leveraging those partnerships as well, right? You talk about Okta, right? So we're working with them on doing some more of response around identity, right? So if we see someone that's exfiltrating data and we know they're in Okta, we want to be able to go to Okta and say, turn off this person's access, right? Or make them re-authenticate just to validate that we know who they are. So we're really going to leverage these partnerships, but also be friendly to the ecosystem, right? So you know, we're, we got an API that's going to be available at the end of this quarter, because we want to be able to integrate with everybody. We know that there's not one solution that can solve everyone's data security problems, right? So there's always going to be a, you know, a set of vendors that customers are going to want to work with, and we really want to be able to let our customers integrate our data with either things that they're building or with other vendors um, you know, that want to be able to do things like orchestration, right? So for example, we have an integration with Torque, right? Because we want to be able to have SOAR, right? We can't do all the automation and response, but there are great vendors out there that can do that that we want to partner with to deliver that. Very interesting, so the company is founded in 2021, it's based in Tel Aviv, so you know they're doing some really interesting problem solving. What would you say is your, you know, kind of from the CTO perspective, there's your secret sauce that's really unique. Because, you know, a lot of times, Israeli cyber companies come at problems with really unique angles. Yeah. What would you say that is? You know, my opinion from my, my time here, I think really is the team, right? I think every company is only as good as its people, and I've been am amazed and impressed by the entire team here at Dig, from top to bottom, right? From the engineers to the people on the front lines, um, I think we've got a great team of people. In the time that I've been here, I've seen us deliver on every item that we put on the roadmap. Right? We're very focused on our customer success and making our customers happy. And just like most companies, we're driving the roadmap based on customer feedback, but I think the biggest thing is we're delivering on that roadmap and we're really making a product that's, that's really designed to make security as easy as possible. And products in market. Products right? in market. You're, you're shipping, you're in, at revenue. We are. Wow, I mean, only two years, that's, that's pretty good. And, and, and you feel like you've got product market fit? We do. Yeah, I think that's, that's something that we hear all the time is, is again, I think what we're seeing is people don't quite have budgets yet for DSPM. There's not a line item in the budget for DSPM. But what we are seeing is when we go in and we're doing proof of concepts, proof of values, and people are seeing what we're able to discover, they're finding budget for us, right? So, you know, I think in a year, two years, you'll start to see very specific data security budgets. But it is a problem that we are solving that people have. And you sell this as a SaaS? service? We do. And, and the, the pricing is based on what? Is it consumption? The is number of data assets. So like an S3 bucket would be a data asset type, right? So the number of uh, different cloud data assets that you have in your environment. What do you see as, as the future, DSPM being, I loved how you described it as embryonic. I'm going to use that term. Uh, you, you, I stole it from Gardner, so I can't take I, all the credit. I'll, I'll credit both of you. There you I go. I think it's brilliant. Uh, and just in your experiences with what Dig is doing and how it's evolving, what do you see as, as the evolution of the DSPM market? It sounds like 
you're right at an inflection point? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, I think as a whole, as we look at where we grow, again, I think some of the points we talked about, data is going to be living in all different types of places. We're going to have new technology that's going to leverage data. So again, being able to protect data wherever it lives, I think is going to be a focus for any vendor in this space. Um, I think ultimately we're going to be part of a bigger security strategy, right? We're looking at people that have, they built data security programs on-prem, now they're figuring out, well, how, how do I do it in the cloud? And in the cloud, there's a lot of other ancillary parts of data security, right? There's governance, there's privacy, and then within data security, you've got, you know, you've got cloud, you've got email, you've got SaaS, right? You've got endpoint. So I think there's a lot of different places that you know, data is going to go to, and I think we're going to do our best to make sure that we follow the trends, and ultimately we follow the industry and where customers need us to be. I think, you know, what you just described is it bodes well for CrowdStrike and the companies that are in their ecosystem because it's so fragmented and so complex for customers. Yeah. They, they want to consolidate, yep. they want to simplify, right? They want to be proactive, they don't want to wait until they figure it out, oh, it's too late, yep. you know? I mean, the whole stop the breach thing, I mean, when I first heard it, I was like, well, that's aspirational, you're not going to stop the breach, and we all know that you, you can't stop every breach, but that is, I, I'm, I'm increasingly convinced that that's the right mindset, yep. and when you, when you start deploying tools like what you guys do, it just gives you more, better observability, better intelligence, and the ability to protect yourself in a way that is, you know, less reactive and more proactive. Yeah, and it really comes back to that first step, right? We tell customers that go down this route, like, don't try to boil the ocean, right? There are key things that you have to do in a data security program, and the first is just to know what you have, right? You can't protect what you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest challenge. And even working with CrowdStrike, right? We had some conversations with some of their sellers, and they're saying that they have people coming to them saying, CrowdStrike, how are you helping address this space? And that's where we're partnering with them to go in, because this is a space that we can help them with you know, in their customer base where their customers are saying, okay, you, we've done all the great things with all the CrowdStrike tech to protect, but we still don't understand the data itself, right? And how do we, again, discover, classify, protect that data. So are you guys co-selling, co, co we are. We are working on that. Okay. Yep, absolutely. I think that'll change here pretty quickly based on some conversations we've had this week. Well, it's, in terms of speed, as we've been talking about that all week here. It sounds like there's been a lot of speed and momentum at DIG and what you've accomplished in just a couple year period. It's, yeah, it's been great. Can you give us a peek as field TTO into the roadmap, maybe some of the things that we should be listening <laughs> for, watching out for in the next six to I nine months? I think my months? product team might, uh, might have some things to say, but I can tell you, today the announcement around SaaS platforms, it won't be our first, or it won't be our last, right? We're going to have a bunch more platforms because again, customers are saying, hey, we've got all this data that lives in all these native cloud services, but what about all of these other SaaS offerings that we use, right? So we're going to be getting a little bit deeper into the SaaS space for sure. All right, we'll be looking. Where can the audience go to learn more? You can go to dig.security. Um, so you get great information about us. And also there's a, a paper that we put out about a month ago called the Dig uh, State of Cloud Security Report. It's a great report. We analyzed eight plus petabytes of data across multi about, uh, across multi clouds. And there's some pretty interesting findings in there that we found about how people are securing or not securing their data. Mm. So it's a great read for anybody concerned about data security. Very cool. Awesome, Anthony, thank you so much for joining Dave yeah, and thank me. Thank you for having us. Giving us the overview of, of dig.security. I wish you had those, the I dig security stickers. We'll have I to, know, I'll see if we'll I can find you one. We'll see if we can find point. you one. You got to hook up Dave with the socks. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll bring you the <laughs> socks. All right, cool, thank you. Awesome. Dig.security, check it out. Great story on DSPM. Anthony, thank you again for Thank you time. so much. For our guest Thanks. and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's day two coverage of CrowdStrike Falcon 23. Dave and I are back with our next guest in just a few minutes. We'll see you soon. <laughs>